What's going on everybody? Boris here at the Ecology Design Studio. Let's talk about Bitcoins today. Folks, I'm very intrigued by this currency and I think they missed out on a fantastic opportunity to call it a credit. Honestly, who wouldn't want to use credits? It's the perfect generic name for a global currency. On a serious side note though, while I do believe currency will become digital in the future, Bitcoin is neither easy to use nor obtain and in this video I will talk about the downsides of it and why while it is a great first step on the road towards a digital currency it will in my humble opinion not end up as the currency of choice worldwide. To get Bitcoin you have to jump through several shady hoops involving foreign banks with whom you have a zero legal recourse in order to convert your government backed currency to Bitcoin or BTC. Bitcoin mining is no longer a viable option for the common man. For those of you not in the know, Bitcoin is a mathematical currency. It was proposed by Satoshi Nakamoto in a 2008 paper and since then has become an internet phenomenon. To obtain Bitcoin, people use advanced hardware to perform mathematical calculations to solve algorithms. Upon a successful solution, a new Bitcoin is unlocked. The currency is capped at 21 million units. That means that there can only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in existence. Ever. And the more Bitcoin is discovered, the harder it is to mine new Bitcoins, which is why mining is out of reach for the regular denizen of this world. You will end up losing more money in electricity and new specialized hardware costs than you would recuperate through Bitcoin mining. Now here is why losing Bitcoin is bad. Remember, they cannot be replaced. In a fiat currency, the currency system we currently have, the government can print more money as necessary, replacing lost or damaged money or as part of an inflationary strategy. I was recently reading an article about a man in Newport, Wales by the name of James Howells who lost 7,500 bitcoins and right now folks, that's seven and a half million dollars. That's sitting somewhere in a landfill or in a dump. That's 7,500 bitcoins the world economy will never, I repeat, never recover. This one simple flaw of bitcoin is enough to invalidate it as a world currency. Keep in mind that to get to your Bitcoin, you need a specific key or passphrase that is almost impossible, not almost, impossible to crack or guess and that people forget those passcodes all the time. So we're going to end up having digital wallets sitting out there with Bitcoins that are lost to the global economy forever. But that's how you lose Bitcoin though and it's not a reason why digital currency in and of itself is not a good idea. It most certainly is and as I stated previously, I believe it is the way of the future. Digital currency that is, not Bitcoin. Currently there are no safe means of storing them. Either you store them online, not safe, or on a hard drive. Either way, huh, by the way, let's back up, the hard drive. The guy that just lost his hard drive, James Howells, that's how he lost it. He put 7,500 Bitcoins on a hard drive in his laptop and I guess he forgot about it, trashed it. I'm not entirely sure what happened. The article is linked somewhere in the description. But yeah, hardware is apparently are not safe or secure either. But it's difficult to use them and conduct business with and you can be hacked. The transaction fees are dictated entirely from a central authority which is slow to reset the minimum fee to a lower BTC value and you get nothing in exchange for that fee whereas with traditional banks you get some form of fraud protection. Time limits. There are time limits on uh, the number of transactions that can take place during a given amount of time. That's a huge downside. No merchant wants to wait the mandatory 10 minutes for their transaction to clear when conducting normal business. Very few real world businesses will take payment in BTC. Yes, there are a few random online vendors and people like Richard Branson trying to cash in on some free PR for his suborbital space tourism space magic company. 
but nobody is actually spending BTC right now. Why would you spend one BTC today worth $1,000 when tomorrow it could be worth $2,000? Heck, that's four months of rent for a lot of people, myself included. Once retailers realize that nobody is actually spending their Bitcoin, they'll discontinue their use. Getting your money out of Bitcoin is also not convenient and not without risk. The few exchanges that offer this service are frequently unresponsive, either as a result of DDoS attacks or just close their doors unannounced, keeping your Bitcoin for themselves with a sorry for the inconvenience message. That's bad, folks. For a currency to work for the common man, it has to be readily available and risk and hassle free. People also lose and forget their passwords all the time, as we already talked about, and that Bitcoin is gone forever. And perhaps the biggest reason I can think of, um, of one of the downfalls of Bitcoin is volatility. Yes, admittedly, to reach a global equilibrium, all things undergo a period of volatility. But Bitcoin is different. People get into it for the wrong reasons. And people that got into it early on gained a lot, becoming millionaires overnight. Or those who are still invested in Bitcoin stand a lot to gain. They're the ones screaming, Bitcoin is great, it'll change the world, buy into Bitcoin. It's those stories of success driving others to invest into Bitcoin. And once they're invested, they want other people to invest into it and so on and so forth. You can see where this is going. But all that is, is an investment, not a day-to-day -day operational currency. There are those out there saying that the relative value of Bitcoin to the US dollar is irrelevant. But for people living in the US or for countries using the US dollar as a reserve currency, that's simply not true. Would you really use Bitcoin for a transaction if you know the value of Bitcoin will go up? Would you really buy a McDouble at McDonald's for one Bitcoin today if you expect the value of Bitcoin to increase dramatically tomorrow, say by a factor of 1000? That would mean that tomorrow you can cash that one Bitcoin in for dollars and buy 1000 McDoubles, feeding yourself and your family and a lot of other people for quite a while. If you know you can sell that one Bitcoin tomorrow and get a lot of money, why use it when you can derive more value from exchanging it for a different currency that will allow you to buy more goods and services? One Bitcoin today can pay my rent for two months, but what if it goes up to 2000 or 4000 or 10000 Do I risk selling the Bitcoin today? Of course not. So people hold on to the Bitcoin they have and they cash them in for US dollars or for their local currency. It makes sense from a consumer perspective, but it is highly damaging to the currency because it is used as gold was back in the gold standard days. Also keep in mind that in this video we're not covering the downsides of the fiat or gold backed currencies. It is true that our currency, while being government backed, quote unquote, is worthless if people stop accepting it. But at the moment it is a stable medium of exchange and only about 0.01% of the world's population even know what a Bitcoin is, let alone how to get one. There are people in the US who don't even know how to use a computer. Heck, we don't even have a computer. What does it tell you about the rest of the world? Bitcoin favors those who get in on it early, those who can afford the hardware to mine, and those who have and know how to use a computer. Those that don't and those who show up late to the game feel cheated and left out. That shouldn't be happening if Bitcoins were succeeding in their main goal, becoming a currency used on a daily basis for everyday purposes. They're not. They're being bought out by people with hardware and money, held until they appreciate in value, and then sold to make a profit. Plain and simple. That's all I got, folks. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment and let me know what you think about Bitcoins. I could be wrong about them. Often I'm, I'm wrong about a lot of things. My gut is telling me to avoid them, and so I will. Time will tell. I'll see you all next time on our Ecology Designs production.